Hi, amazing viewers. Welcome to Christianity over Islam with Shanshuman. And on today's debate, demonized man manifests after Christian proof Jesus is God. Let's watch this amazing video. You said uh, Jesus isn't God, right? No. And who is he? I believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. That tells me nothing. Uh, when you tell me only begotten, that still doesn't tell me anything. So, okay, um, here's what I want you to do before you talk over me. You're not going to talk over me. You're going to speak no, slowly. No, this is not what I'm talking over. Okay, well, let me finish. You're not going to talk over me. You're going to listen slowly, and we're going to go to Scripture, and we're going to deal with Scripture, not your opinion. So did Jesus exist before he became man? No. Okay, go to Hebrews chapter 1. Open up your Bible. Go to Hebrews chapter 1. I hope this guy's not a waste. We'll see. Okay, when you get there, let me know. What translation are you reading? Um, I have a King James. Okay. Read for me Hebrews chapter 1, slowly. Yes, sir. When you got you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Hopefully you'll be a little faster. Hebrews chapter 1. Yeah, start at verses 8 to 9. Read 8 to 9. All right. But unto the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God, is the is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom mm -hmm. thou hast love righteousness and hated iniquity therefore god even thy god hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow now who's talking to who who's talking to who Let this, let to the sun. You see it Um, it's right in front of you. Don't not, guess. Don't play games with me. It's in verse 8. Who's talking to who? But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, who's, is forever who's talking and ever to who? of righteousness. Yeah, who's talking to who? If I have to explain that to you, you have no business talking about the Bible. Who's talking to who? Oh my goodness. And this guy wants oh, to this, teach me about this, 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 Isn't this a quote from a scripture? I didn't ask you that. Listen you to the question thanks? again. Listen to my question again. Don't be a dog who cowers. Who's talking to who in the context? It's now the third time I told you, and you want to teach me the Bible. Okay. Now, in the scripture, it would appear that God is talking to the Son, right? Appear, or is it God speaking to the Son? Do I teach you need to teach you context and starting in verse 5? Don't, don't play games and delay. Right. It's a simple answer. Who's talking to who? All right. Now, if you want to say God's talking here, go no, ahead. No, I don't need to say it. In the context right. in verse 5, who's speaking from 5 all the way? Don't play games with me. I'm going to embarrass you. Stop playing games. All right. In the context, it's saying that God said. Okay, so God is talking to the sun, right? Is he talking to the sun? In verse 8? He said, Thy throne is. This guy's a joke. Right, well, he's referring to the sun, yes. Okay, so now read 10 to 12, verses 10 to 12. You better pay attention and answer directly, not tap dance. In verses 10 to 12, notice what God says to the sun. Read it for me, 10 to 12. Um, and thou. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hand. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall wax old as a garment, and if and as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same and thy years shall not fail. Okay, now I hope you're not gonna play games, so I end up embarrassing you again. God said this to the son. And what did he say to the son at the beginning? Oh, Lord, you did what? At the beginning, thou hast laid the foundations to the earth. Yes, yeah, and he did what also? He stretched out the heavens. The heavens are the work of your hands. Right. So God is saying to the son, at the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will wear out, but you remain the same. Right? Your years never end. Go to Psalm 102 to see where he's quoting from. Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Yeah. Let's see if you're going to be honest and repent of your satanic doctrine. Let's see. Go to Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Okay. Read verses 25 to 27. Of all hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hand. They perish, 
but thou art, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them wax old like a garment and a vesture, and as a vesture shall thou change them, and they shall be changed. Mm -hmm. Keep Thou art the same, thy years shall have no end. Now in the context of Psalm, in the Psalm, who is this being referred to? Who is this talking about? In this Psalm. You don't need to guess. Verse 1 will tell you, verse 12 will tell you, verses 18 to 22, 24 will tell you. Who is the one who is being spoken of that he laid the foundation of the earth, the heavens are the work of his hands, they, re they will wear out, but he remains the same, his years never end. Who is the psalmist talking about? Don't don't play games with me. It's right there in front of me in verse one. Like it's they, really in it to No, in verse one, it's not talking to the sun there, right? It's Jehovah, the Lord, God, my God. Do I need to show you that? Verse one, verse twelve, all, all throughout the psalm, it's about Jehovah verse, God. Yeah, my prayer, oh Lord, and let my Who's the Lord there? To thee. Who's the Lord there? That'll be good, right? Which God? God Almighty, Jehovah, right? Right. Okay, good. So it's Jehovah God. Does Jehovah have a beginning? Right. Does did Jehovah have a beginning? No, he doesn't. Okay, now you better answer honestly, not top dance. In Hebrews 1, 10 to 12, this psalm about Jehovah is applied to the Son. The Son is now said to be that Jehovah who laid the foundations of the earth who made the heavens with his hands, who remains the same, and his years never end. So the Father just glorified the Son as Jehovah Almighty, the Creator, Sustainer, who doesn't change. How can the Son be Jehovah if Jehovah has no beginning, but you want to prove to me that Jesus has a beginning? Well, as, as you well, said, this was applied to the Son, right? Yes, it was applied to the Son. So All answer right. the question. Don't so play games with Psalm 45. Applied, this, this being applied to the Son wouldn't make this, wouldn't necessarily say that the Son is God. Yes, it would, because the only God who doesn't change, who created the heavens and the earth, is Jehovah. There is no other God. Don't play the games with me. Go to Isaiah 44, no, verse 24. No, that's what. Go to Isaiah 44, verse 24. How many gods created the heavens and the earth? Go to Isaiah 44, 24. 44. 24. And you want to teach me about Jesus, that he's not God. Shame on you, you son of the devil. Go to Isaiah 44, verse 24. 24. Yes. Thus said the Lord, my Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretch forth the heavens alone, that spread abroad the earth by myself. So how many gods created the heavens and the earth? One. Okay. So when Psalm 102 talks about Jehovah laying the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of his hands, and he remains the same, and then it's applied to the sun. It only can be right. applied to the sun if he is that Jehovah God Almighty who doesn't change. So don't play games with Not me. Not necessarily. Let's try this Not again. You can't apply a passage about Jehovah being the unchangeable creator to the Son if he's not Jehovah, the unchangeable creator. Yes, necessarily, because the Old Testament says God did it by himself. Right, but there are right. things in the scripture where... Right, there are, right, okay, yeah? There are, there are situations in the scripture where people, things were applied to people that... Things that people have never done were applied to them. You're, you're not listening. No passage in the old testament that describes jehovah as being unique and different from creation is ever applied to a creature stop the games i know what you're talking about i wasn't born yesterday how many gods are unchangeable and years never end and how many gods created the heavens and the earth one how can it be applied to the sun if he's not that one true eternal god i mean the Bible gives an example of that. You're and not listening you know again. what you're talking about. So okay, you're not listening to yourself. Yeah. Rastafarian, you're not listening to yourself. You just said only one God created right. all things and doesn't change. How then can Jesus right. be described as that one God if he's not that one God? He's a creature. You're still not listening. No, he's, I'm, I'm not saying he's described. I'm saying that these things were applied to him. No, he is said to know? be that Lord who created heavens and the earth. Did you read Hebrews 1, 10 and 12? At the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands you don't get any clearer than that and we haven't even gone beyond this passage and you're stumped well let's try it again since only jehovah god laid the foundation of the earth only jehovah god made the heavens with his hands and only jehovah god is unchangeable his years never end i'm still waiting for the answer and you're wasting my time how can this be said of the son that the son is that jehovah god 
who laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with his hands, whose ears never end, if he's not Jehovah God Almighty? Now, I mean, if you look at um, Levi, we look at who? Levi was set to have Levi. Then Levi was set to have paid tithes to Melchizedek. Are you listening? But Levi okay, let's try this again. I know you're going to Hebrews 7, 9, and 10 to embarrass you. I'm not talking about someone being your federal head who when he does something, it'd be credited to you because you are united to him. This is called federal headship, but you're too ignorant to know this. Let me repeat it again. How many gods created the heavens and the earth? Only one. How can then Jesus be said to be that guy, God? Levi, don't help you. It embarrasses you because the concept there is called federal headship, something you don't know because you don't know the Bible. Let's keep it simple. Don't impress yourself because you're going to embarrass yourself. We just got done saying only one God created the heavens and the earth. He did it by himself. How then can Jesus be said to be that God who created the heavens and the earth if he's not Jehovah God Almighty? You didn't answer the question. Now, this is six times I've been asking the question. How can it be the God that created? You see, if you're talking about one God, right? One being, right? To equate the Son as one God would not mean one being. Not so. How many gods created the heavens and the earth and who yours don't change? One God. Okay, one so God in Hebrews 1, 10 to 12, who is that one God that laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with his hands and whose ears never change? In Hebrews 1, 10 to 12, who is that? Don't, don't tell me you forgot. You read it. Who is that? See, you're In Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Yeah, who is that God that laid the foundation of the earth, who made the heavens with his hands, whose ears never change? In Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Right. Who is that God? Is the Lord God. Who is it there? That is a... Who, that is a, who that is, is a, it there a, in context? Let's, okay, let's try it again. Who is it there? One you're starting to now bark like a rabid dog. Like Shut up, you dog, and answer the question. I know you're manifesting because the demon in you. In Hebrews 1, 10 to 12, who is that Lord God? Who's that addressed to? Who's being identified as that Lord God? They're applying it to Jesus Christ. So who is that Lord God? You, see, you keep saying applying. Give me the answer. Who is that Lord God? Who's identified as that Lord God? I'm answering the take any quote from Psalms 102. Okay, so who is that? I'm going to hang up on you in five seconds. Who is that Lord God there? Who's identified as the Lord God who did it? What's his name? Jesus Christ is being Okay, Jesus Christ. Good. Now you're being honest. The demon now is calming down in you. May the Lord save you from your demon. So you just said Jesus Christ is identified as that Lord God. Since there's only one Lord God who doesn't change and created all things. And that Lord God has no beginning. You just said Jesus has no beginning. Do you realize that, right? No, I said they apply. Why am I wasting my time with you? Because you're a kid, you don't know the Bible. Why am I wasting my time with you? Okay. Why am I wasting my time with you? You're not answering my question. You can't even do basic exegesis in Hebrews 1. Why am I wasting my time with you? Jesus, I'm asking you, didn't they took Psalms 102 to apply it to the Son? How do you apply it to a creature when Psalm 102 is about the uncreated, eternal, almighty creator who never changes? How do you apply it to a creature? A creature is not uncreated. He's not almighty. He doesn't create anything. You just read Isaiah 44, 24, where Jehovah created by himself. You're still not getting it. Right. So why am I wasting no. my time with you? You don't know the Bible. You're an ignoramus and you're perverted. Yes, now listen. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to see. Go to Revelation 5.13. Final point. Yeah. Go to Revelation 5.13. Go to Revelation 5.13. Final point. Because you're a waste of time. And you try, You had the audacity to contact me to try to get me not to believe Jesus God. Shame on you. May the Lord have mercy on you or give you what you deserve. Go to Revelation 5.13. Revelation 5.13. Let's see if you get this. If you don't get this, we're going to end the conversation. I'm going to have this as a short introduction to why you are the sons of the devil who hate the true Jesus to your shame and humiliation. This, Revelation 5.13. Read it for me. sided reasoning. Where you Can you read Revelation 5.13? I'm going to give you five seconds. I'm going to hang up on it if you don't read it. Five. Well. Four. MP, hold on. MP, get the hell out of here, MP. Go to hell. Get out of here, MP. I don't want you on my channel. Get out of here. Okay, now, Revelation 5.13. 5, 5 4, 3, 2, 1. Revelation 5.13. 5. Okay, guys, should I hang up on this dog? Because now the demon is manifest. This is the place where this video gets more interesting. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do it to subscribe. Should I hang up on this dog? Read Revelation 5.13. 5.13, I'm going to hang up on you. Go to Revelation 5.13.
to teen. I'm just saying. Read it for me. Read it. I'm going to hang up on you. Don't waste our time. We don't care about your preaching. Go to Revelation 5, 13. Read it. Read it. Read out loud. I'm waiting for you. Read it. 13, you said? Yeah. It's Revelation 5, verse 13. Every creature which is in heaven. Slowly. And on earth, don't go fast. And on the earth. Hey, slow. You're going too fast. Slow. Read it again. Okay. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, Bless, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Okay, now, did you read where it says every creature in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth, in the seas, and all things in them? You read that, right? Right. So that's every creature in, uh, in the entire creation, right? Right. So, right, you said right. I want to say it again. Every creature in the entire creation, right? Right. Okay. You just proved Jesus is not created because every creature in all of creation is giving Jesus the Lamb the exact same worship that they give God the Father. So, Jesus is with the Father, distinct from every creature in all creation, which means he's uncreated like the Father is. He has no beginning. And you still want to rob Jesus of his glory, you son of Satan? Now, you would realize that this is talking about Jesus as the Lamb. Which what has that got to do with the question? What has that got to do with the well, question? Separate. Every creature is separate from the Lamb. You're still not answering my question. Don't play games. Every creature is separate from the Lamb, and yes. they are giving him praises. And this is... The same praise is, they give to the Father. Ever. The same praise this they give to the Father for the yes, same period of time. Throne, this is separating the one in the throne from the Lamb. You sure you want me to show you the, the Lamb is on the throne to embarrass you further? Because you didn't answer my question. Let me repeat my question again. I'm going to embarrass you to show you where the Lamb is. Before I do that, listen to my question again. You just admit everyone heard you and I'm recording you. Every creature in all creation. You said that's every creature. Every creature in all creation is giving the Lamb the same worship that the one on the throne receives, proving he's equal to God the Father in worship, and he's not a creature, like the Father is not a creature, because he's separate from every created thing. But now you made the stupid mistake to assume that because God is on the throne, that means Jesus is not on the throne. Go to Revelation 22, verse 1. Go to Revelation 22, verse 1. I have to send you packing. Revelation 22, verse 1. Would I be able to make any points on these things, or am I just You're going to, to make a point to that's going to deal with the passages accurately, not tap dance, because I'm going to embarrass you. I'm not here to hear your blasphemy. Go to Revelation 22, verse 1. 5, Revelation. 4. Yeah, read Revelation 22, verse 1. You need to stop being so... Read like the verse. That. I don't care for your opinion. You're a son of Satan. I don't care about you. You're a son of Satan. Wants to rob my Jesus of his glory. Read Revelation 22, verse 1. Are you going to read it? Revelation 22, what? Verse 1. This one. Yes. And showed me a pure river and a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. How many thrones? One throne. And it belongs to who? The throne of God. See, now you know you're a filthy demon. Throne of God and who? It's right in front of you. Well, it says, and the Lamb. Wait, but so, the throne of God, and the Lamb. So the throne belongs to who? God. Okay. Doesn't the Bible say you need to go to hell. in his father? Yeah. Right there. Thank you. Okay, guys. Short and to the point. You see the demons? The demons that fill them? It's in front of his eyes. Throne of God and of the Lamb. Throne of God. Throne. Throne of God. In the pod. All right. Anyway, guys, it was short barbecue. I hope you enjoyed it. You Christians who don't like my approach, get out of here. Go to Hades. Don't come to my channel. I don't want to hear your complaint. You're going to get blocked. You don't like it when I deal with blasphemy sons of Satan the way I do? Don't come to my channel. Get the hell out of my channel. I'll embarrass you too. Shame on you. You don't have the zeal for the Lord Jesus. But if someone insults your mother or your daughter or your wife, you'll be zealous. You wicked, effeminate cowards. Don't come here and complain you don't like my approach. Go somewhere else. Jesus is Jehovah God Almighty. Tell us a little about your background, your journey, and why you're here. I grew up in a Jehovah's Witnesses uh, household. I don't know. I kind of never really resonated with it. And, you know, I spent... Uh, kind of the rest of my teenage years not really involved in it and then kind of around two years ago I started to think more about God and think more about um, you know the, the spiritual side of life and I kind of came to know God but I went to my brother and I went to my dad for it and they're both chose witnesses so kind of the first year of my Christian journey I was learning with them and I was not gonna lie I was pretty close to becoming a witness mm. I was about to start going to meetings and all that and then i don't know something happened where i just i felt like 
I was lost um, with my Christian faith and I kind of prayed to God and I said, hey, you know, show me the right way. I feel like I feel like something's wrong, show me the right way. And then kind of the weeks after that, uh, I kind of realized that the Trinity was a lot more, like it was it was in the Bible a lot more than I realized. Um, and then I started realizing a lot of the, the errors that the witnesses have in their teaching and their doctrines, their false prophecies, the, and all that. And then I kind of came to the realization that Jesus Christ is God, Holy Spirit is God. Amen. And that's just, um, by the way, just so people understand, you were just reading the Bible and you saw that from the Bible, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I, I stopped reading the, uh, the New World Translation and I picked up another Bible and I said, wow, if you just read it, Exactly. Straight up, you kind of realize that this is so blatant, you know? <laughs> wow. You know, it's amazing. I was just watching a clip from a YouTube channel where this brother in the Lord Jesus Christ witnesses to the Joe's witnesses. It's ironic you just said that. I just want to repeat what you said. If you just read the Bible straight up without the Watchtower literature, it's just straight up clear that the Holy, the Holy Spirit makes it known in His Word that God is a Trinity, right? Just if you read the Bible, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and also the, the, the New World Translation is very, uh, I, I notice a lot of wrong things in the translation as well. Yeah, now, here's what's going to amaze you. I was just watching this clip. The Society admits, now guys, I want you to listen. Class has begun. Pray for this young man. Pray for me to help him. I had been aware of this <clears throat> statement in one of the Society's literature and today, just to confirm God is speaking to you, and He's bringing you to the truth, and I pray He uses me as a servant to bring you the truth. I'm going to give you the link. It's Eric Schaefer. He's got a channel where he witnesses to Joe's witnesses. And today, of all days, he posted this nearly eight-minute clip. Joe's witnesses are forbidden to read the Bible. And he quotes them why, why he says that. So I'm going to just play that relevant part. Guys, you see how miraculous, supernatural the triune God is? How He orchestrates events and brings things together? So here it is. I'm going to put it in. The chat, if you see it, then I'm going to send it to you on here on right. Skype. That right there, I'm going to play what he said. Now, repeat what you said. You said just by reading the Bible without the New World Translation, mm -hmm. what did you discover? That it's, it's oh, I, I know this YouTuber actually. Um, but yeah, it's it's very blatant that Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is God. Just by reading the Bible, if you don't read the Watchtower for version and the yeah. literature, right? Yeah. Okay, now let me play this clip. Now, guys, he's going to quote... One of the literature of the Jehovah's Witnesses, a source that I've been aware of for years, the society admits that if you just read the Bible by yourself without the society teaching you, you will end up embracing the very doctrines that Christendom teaches, an admission that just reading the Bible will lead you to the Trinity. So let me play that clip as confirmation from the Holy Spirit. So let's play it. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Over the years of reading Watchtower literature, I have come across some remarkable statements. Listen. Uh, during this time, I have read some catastrophic contradictions, some mind-blowing manipulations. I've read some preposterous prophecies, some disturbing doctrines, and I've read some terrible twistings of Scripture. But of all these deceptive techniques, it's probably when the Watchtower told the truth Listen. that I find the most amazing. What do I mean by that? Well, looking at the Watchtower's founder, Charles Taze Russell. He says something in the Watchtower, September 15th, 1910, that totally blew my mind. September 15th, 1910, in the Watchtower by Charles Taze Russell. Yeah. Look what he says. Watch. Listen, guys. Furthermore, not only do we find that people cannot see the divine plan in studying the Bible by itself, but we see also that if anyone lays the scripture studies aside, even after he has used them, even after he has become familiar with them, after he has read them for 10 years, if he lays them aside and ignores them and goes to the Bible alone, though he has understood the Bible for 10 years, our experience shows that within two years, he goes into darkness. Friends, this is not a bam. Mm. Now he's going to finish that point again. I'll listen to what he says. Okay, listen into darkness friends this is a remarkable statement charles taze russell is saying it doesn't matter if you've been a jehovah's witness for 10 years you could be seasoned in watchtower doctrine you can know it back and front forwards and backwards if you step away from it Listen. and read nothing but the bible in two years time it doesn't matter how seasoned you are in two years time you will step away from what they believe in other words Reading the Bible without Watchtower Doctrine takes you away from Watchtower Doctrine. <laughs> there you go. That's what I wanted to play. So you guys see that? Even the founder, Charles Taze Russell, and his scripture studies admitted that if you just read the Bible alone, you will never become a Jehovah's Witness and come to the conclusion 
that the Jehovah Witness doctrines are biblical. He calls it going back into darkness. We call it escaping the darkness, entering the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you guys see that? Yep, yep. Now, yep. let me get you the link again. Cool. I just posted the link. For those of you who go there, he gives you. It's it's an addition. And that's 1910, I believe he said. September 15, 1910. So there you go. And this, what did this young man just say? I wanted to hear what he just said. Just reading the Bible, not the Jehovah's Witness perversion or their literature. He could see the Trinity in the Bible. Are you seeing the confirmation? Yeah. Right now. So now you studied the Bible. What happened next? So we can get into answering your question. So what happened next? Um, I guess, you know, it was kind of such an intense experience because I was so certain that Jesus wasn't God, that the Holy Spirit was an active force, which, by the way, if you read the Bible, makes no sense. But um, so, yeah, I, I was I was completely set on that. And then as I started to learn more and more about it, I mean, it was just it just felt like this this kind of weight was lifted off of me because. I would, when, like, I don't know, for example, I, when I would pray to God and I'd be like, oh, thank you for making the world. As a Jehovah's Witness mind, I would say, oh, but there's also scriptures that say Jesus made the world. So, like, you didn't make the world alone. So it was just, yeah, it was, was baffled. hurting my mind. And then when I came to realize that the Trinity is true, when I would pray to God, oh, thank you for making the world, it made more sense. Um, just as an example. And then as, you know, time went on, I learned more and more about the Jehovah's Witnesses' doctrines and teachings. I learned more and more that this can't be the truth. And basically, I, on my on my downtime, I love watching debates about you know Christians against Muslims or Christians against Jehovah's Witnesses because it just teaches me more and more, and that's basically how I found your channel. And um, and I did have a conversation with my dad about all this and how hey, you know, I don't believe in the interpretation of of scripture that you guys believe in. And we talked about the Trinity, and he is really against it. He finds no possible way that this can be logical. Yeah. And yeah, so I I, I came to you to, to help me with that. Now. When you said with your dad, just so people understand, your dad is a Jehovah's Witness for how many years? Oh, man, maybe 50 years. So close to 50 years. So your dad, pray for his dad that he comes to the truth for the glory of Jesus Christ. So your dad been a Jehovah's Witness for 50 years. And here yep. you're a young man who just within a year or less than a year are coming to understand the Trinity. And when you go ask him about the Trinity, what happened to that conversation between you and him? So, yeah, um, he just kind of started questioning like oh like so what do you believe in the trinity because he knows that a lot of different christian sects believe in different ideologies of the trinity like modalism and stuff like that so yeah. he's not really 100 percent sure yes. on what the true definition of the trinity yes. is yeah. and i tried explaining it to him you know uh, like to kind of make it short like three persons one being um and he was he didn't understand what the being was he's like oh is the being god or who are the three persons like i don't understand and yeah. i tried explaining it to him but he uh he really just didn't grasp it and he started throwing scriptures at me you know of the um so called like the scriptures that say that the father is greater than jesus oh, yeah, the only true god is the father yes. uh jesus is the firstborn of all creation and i do have i did have answers to that but i don't think it was you know as well thought of as it should have been because when i came to him telling him about my belief i didn't really want to debate because like i said he has like 50 years on me so but it kind of turned into one and didn't really go well in my favor so that's okay you're gonna learn and there's still hope for your dad but so hold, he's 50 years into this indoctrination and the yeah. typical passages that they quote against the trinity colossians 1 15 they'll, they'll also quote revelation 3 14 they yeah. also quote Proverbs 8.22, et cetera, et cetera. We'll go through that. But <clears throat> he also mentioned the Council of Nicaea, you told me? Yeah, he said that the Trinity was a idea brought up by the Council of Nicaea. Everybody and their mother and grandmother appeals to the Council of Nicaea. You guys caught it? The Council of Nicaea is the most vilified council of all the councils. Everybody and his grandmother, right? Muslims, Socinians, those who believe Jesus is just a man. Modalists, Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses, everyone quotes the Council of Nicaea as when Christianity really became corrupted, right, and perverted. Muslims yeah. will tell you that it was the Council of Nicaea that determined the canon, which is not true. That's a, There's a reference to the canon, Second Nicaea, if my memory doesn't fail me, and I trust Holy Spirit perfect my recall of the facts. But everyone quotes the Council of Nicaea in 32580. So now, with that said, I just gave you a link in Skype, and I gave everyone else the link here. This is the Jehovah Witness website where they link to the Bibles that they use. 
Yeah. I, I have to say that the Jehovah Witness website, and when I'm speaking, I'm also speaking to everyone else, you and them. So all of you benefit from his questions for future reference. I have to say that this is perhaps one of the most polished, professional looking website. They spent top dollar to make this website look professional. Yeah. Now, if you go to that link, as Holy Spirit anoints us and fills us to glorify Jesus Christ by speaking truth and help me to be patient so I can make it clear to you and he illuminates you and everyone else, you'll see the Bibles that they use and it's on there. So if you go to that link, guys, click on it, you'll see it has... New World Translation of the Holy Scripture Study Edition. Then the 2013 Revision. Then the New World Translation of the Holy Scripture is 1984 Edition. So up until 2013, that was the Bible they had. It was a little black one. Now it's this gray one. Yeah. Ashley Gray right here. You see it? So, but not only that, look what else they make available. Their Kingdom Interlinear Translation of Greek Scriptures, where they give you the Greek text that they use to translate from. Then they have King James Version, American Standard Version, and the Bible in Living English. Now, if you guys are not aware, up till 1952, the Bible that the Jehovah Witnesses preferred to use was the King James Bible. And they even printed their own editions of the King James Bible. And the other reason why they have American Standard Version and they use that is because the American Standard Version came out in the first decade of the 20th century. I'm trying to remember it was in 1901, 1905, but right there around there. Guys, confirm, fact check me. Because this was the American edition of what's called the Revised English Bible. And that came out in the 1880s. Now, as the Holy Spirit enables me to speak clearly. Again, I'm not going to remember everything perfectly. We're imperfect. He's perfect. May he perfect us. The American Standard Version employs the word Jehovah in the Old Testament every time the divine name appears. And that's what the Jehovah's Witnesses love about it. That the American Standard Version, not produced by the Jehovah's Witnesses, but a Bible committee, decided to use the word Jehovah for the over 6,800 occurrences of the divine name in their Old Testament. So if you pick up American Standard Version, you're going to see it says Jehovah whenever divine name appears in the Old Testament. And then you have other recent translations that are following the same principle of rendering the divine name in English with an appropriate <clears throat> approximation of the pronunciation. For example, the Legacy Standard Bible. So and I'm just preparing you for the Bibles. Leg Legacy Standard Bible, which is produced by John MacArthur Seminary. Master Seminary, in the Legacy Standard Bible, which is a revision of the New American Standard Bible, they decided to go with the word Yahweh in their Old Testament. So the 6,800 plus occurrences, over 6,800 times where the divine name appears, the Legacy Standard Bible rendered the divine name yod He wa He as Yahweh, Legacy Standard Bible. There's another Bible on BibleGateway.com. It's called World English Bible. They too rendered the divine name as Yahweh. Now, I'm just telling you this for your education, because as serious students of the Bible who love Jesus Christ and his word, serious students of the faith, you got to know these versions. So, Legacy Standard Bible uses Yahweh in the Old Testament. American Standard Version uses Jehovah. And then World English Bible uses Yahweh in the Old Testament. But there's another Bible that was produced by Catholics, the New Jerusalem Bible. And the New Jerusalem Bible also goes with the word Yahweh for the Old Testament. So, everyone clear? Everyone with me so far? You're with me. I know you're following me, right, brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, welcome back. Hope you've learned on this amazing video. Please do it to like, subscribe, hit up the notification button so that each time we drop our new videos, you'll be notified. And do it to write in the comment section whatever thing you've learned from this amazing video. As you can see in this video, Sam asks this guy that what is, what is it that he don't believe in the Christian? And he said he don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. We Sam told him to read a particular verse in the book of then gave him in the book of Hebrews chapter one from verse eight to nine told him to read which the Bible make it clear say but but about the son he says your throne O God will last forever and ever and escape and a scepter of justice will be scepter of your kingdom verse nine you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness therefore God your God has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. So Sam asked him at this particular time that who is speaking to to him. And this guy was not even ready to even reply Sam. He was just tap dancing and yelling and shouting to Sam. Why Sam just end up the call in the in the talk and go on with his message and start passing all the proof to the muslim making them to understand that jesus truly is the son 
of God. Wisham started by telling them that in the Old Testament, was everything they are reading in the book. They should not point a particular verse. They just read and did not start from the first chapter. Just point up a point there and take it that this thing is, this particular verse is corrupted. But Sam neither is always here and available to give you the right point in that verse, which if you are confused or convinced in that scripture as you can see in this debate some made every proof that was speaking in this hebrews chapter one and made it clear that god was speaking directly to the son so if not god was speaking to his son so who was he speaking to that means he's talking directly to his own son that is jesus christ that some began to make it clear that the son that if god is uncreated that means jesus is uncreated because if you can read in the book of matthew chapter one before when Jesus, before when Mary gave birth to Jesus, Jesus Christ was not being given birth like the way many men were given birth. You can see there that it was said that the Holy Spirit will come upon her, that the Holy Spirit will come upon her and overshadow her. That means if God is uncreated, that means Jesus Christ is uncreated. That means directly He is the Son of God. Thanks for watching this amazing video. Please do it to like subscribe hit up the notification button so that each time we drop our new videos you'll be notified thanks for watching this amazing video